There was there's a guy who used to study with me. Actually, he used to live in San Francisco, and he came to New York, and he had AIDS. And I was living up in Woodstock, and he was living in Kingston, and he was in the hospital. And sister called me up, and I and I go visit him. And I went to visit him, and I'm sitting in his room, and he'd been this way for months, for months, covered with scabs, barely able to get out of bed, can't do anything. And I looked at him, and I said, you know, I said. If you let go, if you let go, you're going to come back to this world as a beautiful baby with everything remarkable to live for. Everything remarkable to live for. You're also going to bring everything you've learned in this lifetime about God, spirit, meditation with you into your next lifetime. Why are you holding on? That's what I said to him. Why are you holding on? And he looked at me and he started to smile and he shook his head. Next day he left. He was hanging on to this for three months. He needed somebody to sit down and tell him this. He said, what are you holding on to? This miserable, you know, suffering and that's never going to change and you're holding you gra gasping for You're going to leave. Come back, you'll be a beautiful baby, you know, with everything that the future has to. You understand? Now, if I hadn't been doing spiritual practice for 30 years, how could I sit down and talk to somebody like that? Totally confident, you know, not giving them or selling them a bill of goods, but just consciously saying, hey, look, time to let go. You know, there's nothing wrong with dying. What's wrong, what really is terrible is living like a miserable son of a bitch. You know, that's really terrible. Living here in this state of misery. But I'm not saying people should commit suicide. I don't believe in that. But I'm saying when the time comes to let go, What's the word? You come back. You're a beautiful baby. You have everything wonderful to live for, everything. So it's all this fear inside. And this fear is not just of dying, it's the fear of living. Do you understand? If you overcome the fear of living, you'll never be a second afraid of dying. Ever. So the fear really is the fear of living. So people, as I say, safety, security, it's that fear of living. They live like tortoises in a shell, you know? But even tortoises, God, they go out and swim 3,000 miles, you know? I mean, they, <laughs> but they live like in a shell, in this carapace that protects them. And one day they got to go. So it's the fear of living. When you become a spiritual warrior, there's no more fear of living. You do what you have to do in your life to serve God, whatever it is. No, I don't walk around in robes. I don't have my hair cut. I don't, you know, I don't, I look like I walk down the street. I'm Joe Stewart, you know, <laughs> walking down the street, you know. But I made the decision years ago that I'm not going to be afraid of living because that is, that is really the fear. Because once you overcome that, the fear of death, is non-existent. We should discover that life and death are the same thing. You know, and all the death is stepping into the unknown and opening to the vast creativity that the universe has to offer your soul as it continues to evolve. And if you manage to overcome that in life and you can live with an open heart, you live with that joy, with that love, with that gratitude in your heart, the universe has such abundance to offer you when you leave this ridiculous place, there's so much abundance. It's infinite. It is beyond all human comprehension. It is so vast and infinite. I, I find it very easily get, to get caught up in if only and then fill in the blank because it. Well, the reason is you don't have any training. <laughs> you don't have any. If only you had training. If only you had training. Right? What have you been doing the last 50 years? You know? So look, you have life, get training. That's it. That's the answer to all your questions, practically. When people say, wah, ba, ba, my problems, you don't have any training. If you have training, you'll be able to deal with all your problems. If you have training, you can deal with your family. You can. If you have training, you can deal with your husband, your wife, your children, your parents. You can deal with them. 
first of all, you get a sense of humor. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and you're not intimidated by all the stuff that goes on, you know? By other people's craziness, you're not intimidated. You can deal with your boss, with the people that work with you. you can, you're not intimidated by them. But you've got to get training. I've been telling this to people for years. It's so hard to get anyone to listen to this thing, you know? You know, it's like, I, 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 look, I had an 11-hour flight to get out here, you know? And what saved my ass on that airplane was watching the Olympics. I mean, they had the Olympics on all the time. And I'm watching these kids that are amazing. They're totally amazing to watch. And you look at them, well, seven hours in the gym, training, work, work. All they talk about is work, work, training, training, work, work, training. That's all they talk about. And then you see this kid jumps up in the air like, like, like she's weightless, does 14 twists and turns and lands on her feet. How do you do that? Work, work, training, work, training, work, training, work. And I love what I'm doing. So there's no if only, you understand? They do what they have to do to learn. This is what's missing in the lives of everyone. And these kids are just prime examples of what is missing. And people think they can have a spiritual life, which is harder than learning how to do, 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 do you know? Without training, it's absurd. It's absurd. And the only thing that happens, frankly, is time passes. <laughs> Guaranteed, time passes. If it doesn't pass, you're dead. Time passes, and then it's, if only I had, if only, if only, and, you, know, you say, okay, my will says I'm going to do what I, when I met my spiritual teacher, I made a commitment to myself. I will do whatever I have to do to learn what he has to teach me. I didn't care what it had to cost me, and trust me, <laughs> it was something to have to go through to get. I will do whatever I have to do. It didn't matter what I had to pay, what price, what I had to do. I am going to learn this. Because I never saw anything like it, and I knew this is exactly what I needed to learn to get past this crazy steward that I was living with when I was younger. Has it hurt me? But that was the commitment I made. And there was never an if only. I did it. I did it. I did it. Whatever I had to do. Go to Texas, I went to Texas. You know, this place in the world I wanted to live on the face of the earth was Texas. Trust me. <laughs> I went to Texas. I, spent, I was there for six months. He told me you go for three weeks. And I, I said, Rudy, it's been six months. He said, you're on your fourth day. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, only you. <laughs> only you. Nine years it took to work out three weeks. You know? But I did what I had to do. And then I went to India and I met Kala Rinpoche, God bless him, you know? And I said, Rinpoche, should I move back to New York? He said, yes, if you go back to New York, your teachings will become spread all over the world. That's what he told me. Within six months, I was living back in New York. For a year, I was living back in New York. I gave up shopping centers and ashrams and devoted student, you can't believe, bakeries and businesses I had there. I said, I'm going back to New York. I can't live here anymore. I got to go. And it was because Kala Rinpoche told me that. He said, you got to go back because you're, and it's exactly what happened. I was, within three years, I was teaching in Europe. I was in South America and in the Middle East, all over the United States. It was like unbelievable what was going on. So, and, you know, what I'm saying is, is that it can't be if only. You got life, you have breath, you're alive, you take care of what you take care of business. That's it. And if you don't, you have only yourself to blame. And you can't say, if only I did that, if only I did, you know. I have no empathy for that. <laughs> you just do what you got to do. And if you don't do it, just be happy with your lot, that's all. And don't go, if only. This is what I got, and be happy with it, you know?